I, I remember the first one. Uh, it was very broad, trying to get scientists interested in Rett syndrome. And a meeting like this, it has quite a different flavor, actually, uh, because the, the, the basic biology, which has in the past dominated, is now a relatively small part of it. It's about enabling, solving the problems associated with delivering genes to cells in the brain that don't have enough of it. So for me, it's been you know, very different from what I usually go to but it's absolutely right for this time. And uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, I think it's a pioneering sort of a meeting. Just the sheer number of ways of potentially addressing the genetics of Rett syndrome and essentially having a disease reversing therapy is, is like amazing. I mean, it's, it's hard to even digest all of it. it it's, it's so much. You know, we're going to go from within the span of a decade, um, zero, you know, targeted therapeutics to multiple to where we're going to have to be, you know, shepherding patients and which ones will be best for them. And, you know, it's going to be almost, it's going to be a plethora of riches. And it's just it's so inspiring to see that, you know, happening. To go from the identification of the gene by Huda Zogby in 1999 to the first mouse models in 2001, the demonstration of reversibility in 2007, AAV being demonstrated in 2013, and here we are in 2023, and we already have the first clinical trials underway. That, relative to other diseases, is incredibly fast, and it's due to the hard work of a lot of different groups, many of whom have been funded by RSRT. I think you have a very committed, dedica dedicated group of people who are organizing these meetings, but what is also impressive is the caliber of scientists and physician researchers who are here. This is the creme de la creme of red. It feels more like a family, like everyone really has a stake in this. It's not just, okay, like it's part of my job, I produce drugs or I, uh, uh, it's like really there is a personal dedication and investment. Um, we heard from families that the desire is to move forward as fast as possible. So whatever is ready for clinic, we take what we have and then we build on that as the years go by. And some of these technologies that are earlier in development are getting to the point where they're getting to people. But what's different about this meeting is that it's about getting stuck into to the, the therapy. And for that, you really need money. Yeah, I mean, look, if you're going to have a conference, being able to get all the right stakeholders in the room is so critical. Um, I particularly like the panels where there's some regulatory representation as well to provide that perspective because it's one thing to have companies going back and forth or academics opining on, you know, what should be done, but, but there's like a nice reality check. I think it provides a very, very valuable perspective and also hope um, because Obviously, there were many, many questions posed to the FDA. How can this move quicker? How, how can the approval process be streamlined? And the answers are one part, and they're very encouraging, but just the fact that there is access to the FDA and have, to have these discussions is a um, very hopeful aspect. I don't think we're in the home stretch. I think we're turning towards the home stretch. But, but we have to, have to understand that that home stretch will be a long one. And so now is the time to use all of the momentum one has built. And with the support of the RSRT, run as hard and as fast as we can.